Warm greetings all, welcome. Thank you for joining me. Today, I've got good news to bring you. This is Mark Emery. I'm the founder of the Panama Christian Foundation, the World Mission Church, and the Community Support Network, all of which are combining to do some really great things, which I'm gonna share with you today. So in this presentation today, we're gonna to accomplish several things. First, I'm gonna show you how we're initiating just outright miracles in our work in Venezuela. Thanks to the combined efforts of the Panama Christian Foundation, PCF, our supporters, and the Community Support Network, okay? Secondly, I'm bringing an update to our current supporters who are already making direct contributions to this effort. So it's gonna be an update. And then I'm gonna show you how you can be a part of saving lives, literally, and creating miracles in a big way without being asked to dig deep into your pockets. That's a switch, right? All right, to do that, I'll be introducing you to the Community Support Network, which will enhance your own economic independence it will indirectly support our efforts in what we're doing in Venezuela, and it will spread the good news to the world in a viral fashion. So it's win, win, win. Everybody wins. All right, so these are all important objectives. So let's get started. Let me show you what we're doing, what we've been able to do in Venezuela just most recently. This is the latest update. All right, let's get to it. So let's talk about saving lives in Venezuela. And we are in fact doing that among many other things. Brianna here is our poster child. You can see her on the left. She had an 18 pound tumor in her abdomen. The doctors didn't give her any hope, not because there wasn't sufficient treatment, but that there wasn't sufficient supplies and medicines in the hospital to successfully perform the surgery that she needed. We went to work on that, long story short, through the black market, we found what we needed. Brianna got the surgery she needed and she's had to go back to the hospital for a number of follow-ups, as you might imagine. There have been complications, but you can see her beautiful angelic smile, she's doing extremely well, and uh, we're trying to take very good care of her along with her parents in her own community. And she is one of the success stories that we're really very happy to be able to talk about. So Brianna is one of our poster children, and we have many, <laughs> but let me give you a glimpse as to what life is like in, in Venezuela. Um, we get into quite a bit of this in the other videos that we put together. And uh, you can dig into that when you have a chance to look at those. I'm not gonna spend much time on that, but let's just take a quick look, okay? There are routine protests uh, for President Maduro, the ex-bus driver turned president successor to Cesar Chavez. And um, unlike many of the uh, uh, leftist protests in the United States, these protests are relatively civilized. They march in the streets. They don't loot, they don't destroy, they don't start uh, too many fires. However, despite their peaceful nature, this particular protest, the uh, police or military shot and killed several protesters. 50 were sent to prison for the mere crime of protesting. And uh, what happens afterwards is uh, Maduro's security teams, who by the way are not Venezuelan because he can't trust the Venezuelans because of what he has done to them, he brings in Cubans for his security forces. It's much easier for the Cubans to uh, chase down and, and, and kill Venezuelans who are peacefully protesting um, for a change than it is for the Venezuelans to do it, okay? So anyway, what happens after the protests is uh, quite often when the organizers are discovered, 
these security teams will go out into the neighborhoods and uh, let's just say they will exact their vengeance on the leaders. So this is the type of uh, draconian rule that these people have to live under and uh, we could spend several hours discussing that but we won't just to give you this idea. Okay. Now, let's take a look at uh, one of the challenges that the Venezuelans have to deal with. What you're looking at here is a line of people waiting to get gasoline. The lines go for miles. People can wait up to four days in this line, which goes for miles and miles to get gasoline and when they finally get to their rations after waiting for days I don't know how you live in your car for four days but after they get their rations here's what they get a single liter of fuel which you can bring home in the coke bottle four days of waiting for that Simply amazing. We can't imagine such hardships. So because the folks can't use their cars for very much, they really get angry at the government for putting them in this position. So they take their cars and they put them out in the highways, in the streets, and block the highways as a means of protest to block the government from doing what they need to do in their transportation moving around the country. So as you can imagine, everything pretty much comes to a standstill. How does a society function like that? It's hard to imagine. Malnutrition is everywhere. On the left, we have a one-year-old baby. It's, and malnutrition is especially tough on, on the babies and the young children because their organs are just forming. And when they don't get the proper nutrition, they have all kinds of complications. Malnutrition leads to deformities, diseases, all kinds of complications. Here's a 23-year-old woman trying to live. She looks like a scarecrow. And there's examples of this all over the place. Here's a young man, same situation. Um, Terrible, terrible situation. You can't imagine that these situations exist in modern day society. Here's a woman and her young little baby girl who we're helping. We brought her some food and supplies. Looks like she's, um, she's feeding a little girl quite well at the sacrifice of uh, giving her her own food. Look at the mom, how skinny her arms and legs are. She too is suffering as she tries to provide for her little girl. Common situation. So let's look at the food ministry that we have going here and whatever we do provide, it's only a drop in the bucket. Never are the needs met. And so we're constantly trying to expand our capabilities in delivering food to these people. Okay, here's a happy family after uh, receiving some of the supplies that uh, we were able to bring to Alexander, actually. My man on the ground there. Here's Brianna again with supplies that she's getting, some food and medicine. And uh, it's just amazing to get the love back from the children and the mothers especially uh, when they, sh they know that someone actually cares for them someone is actually tending to their needs. So it's, it's really a joy in being able to, to give to these folks who are so needy, in such desperate need of help and support. Here we've got cornflakes, powdered milk, cooking oil, rice, pasta, um, the basics, nothing fancy. Nothing uh, ready to speak of. Once in a while, when we can get a, a few chocolates to give to the kids, that is a super welcome treat. They are ecstatic to have chocolate because that's just not a part of their lives 
living the way that they do, just struggling to get the basics for living. There's a medical ministry. This is especially important. They're all important, but um, here we provide not only to the most desperate people in need, they go to the hospital and the hospital says, okay, well, we can perform the necessary surgery or treatments for you, but you have to go out and find the medicines and supplies because there's nothing in the hospitals. So in addition to helping individual people and families out, we're also bringing supplies to the hospitals. And we have to sneak it in because in a socialist country, everything is controlled by the government. And unless the government gets a piece of the action, they don't want anything else to go on. So bringing in private supplies for the hospital is taboo, and they won't allow it if they can stop it. And so we have to be very clever as to how we get these things in to the hospitals. And of course, the hospital personnel assist us in every way they can. Here's some nurses in the hospital getting some of the medicine that they need, but the conditions in the hospital are actually horrendous. Here you see a gurney with dried blood, hasn't been cleaned. The rooms are in complete disorder and disarray. Water leaks, rusted pipes, um, we could go on. It's just a horrific, uh, horrific example of uh, just no maintenance, none whatsoever. And in the tropics, you've got the humidity, which corrodes things very, very quickly. We've seen operations performed, cesarean sections, where the lights go out in the middle of the operation, and the surgeons have to work with flashlight. Um, it's just a horrific situation. So we're very active in bringing medicines to the hospitals as best we can. This newborn baby needed a surgery desperately, but the hospital did not have sutures. And so we had to go out and bring in the sutures so that the doctors could perform the necessary operation for this little guy, okay? So here's uh, Santiago with some food and medicine, some powdered milk and different things. Um, the photo above is Santiago when, when we were giving treatment to him and we show him in black and white also because he didn't make it. Uh, he died with complications to his uh, internal infections or whatever the case might have been. So um, he was a loss. Uh, went into the loss column. Here's Brianna. Brianna, we've been working diligently with Brianna. She's got lung uh, problems, lung infections. She requires a, um, an oxygen uh, tank and pump. That was $450 just for one of those in Venezuela. And so she's getting a lot of care and treatment. But, uh, but she's doing well. Here are a couple clips we can see of her. So we're active in getting medications out to the elderly, the young, everybody who needs it, quite honestly. And uh, it's not just a matter of money and being able to buy these things, which is difficult enough for most of these people who simply cannot afford it with the hyperinflation they're dealing with and the prices that it's just out of reach. Uh, getting medications impossible because of the lack of money, but not only that, it's very difficult to find. 
in a broken economy, you don't just go out and pick things up at the store. Supplies simply aren't there. So having the right channels and back channels and um, sources is half the battle over and above just the lack of availability of funds to buy these things. Here's a sweet little girl. You can tell she's got a skin condition. She's got her medicated creams. Uh, Mama gets the uh, medications that she needs over on the right. And uh, this little angel had a thyroid disorder as a baby. One of many complications. And uh, you can tell on the right how wonderful she is doing with the proper nourishment and treatment and medicines given the proper care she's just a beautiful little angel and you can see the difference you can actually see the difference in in, in these kids here's brianna again the first picture i showed you she had a beautiful smile on her face but um, that wasn't uh, representative of how she felt much of the time you can you can see the horror in, in this picture with this tumor and the scar from previous um, previous surgeries. Um, thank God she is doing wonderful. And look at that beautiful smile that she has. She, she's uh, just a beautiful little girl. And uh, all we can do is thank God for being in a position to help this little angel and many others like her. So now we uh, move on to our animal ministry. People aren't the only ones who are suffering greatly. And uh, uh, we have a real big heart for animals. And uh, just as the people are enduring misery beyond belief, the animals don't have it any better. Most often because the families cannot even take care of their own needs they're in no position to take care of the dogs or the other animals they have. And so they put them out on the street, and that's when they're in a very merciful mood. They do much more horrific things than that. But the street is full of abandoned dogs. We find abandoned dogs tied to trees and just left to die, tied to the tree. And uh, we talk about that in a little more detail in some of our previous videos, which I urge you to watch when you can. Um, but I want to try and keep things on a more positive note here. <laughs> so let's take a look. Uh, we built a refuge for these street animals, these doggies, these little uh, gifts from heaven. And uh, look at these three. Just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, well-kept. And, uh, and this is how they are. After we find them get them back to health, get them properly nourished, get them uh, the proper veterinary care. And it's a process. It really is a process. You see on the uh, upper right here, Alex. He's our man on the ground there. He used to be my groundskeeper here in Panama, went back to uh, visit his family in Venezuela when Panama changed their immigration rules. He was unable to come back. So, so now he's doing, uh, doing work for PCF in Venezuela, and he's the uh, spearhead to all that you see going on here. But this refuge uh, he built by hand, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. We currently care for uh, at least 40 dogs at the moment, and that's quite a job in itself, um, as you might imagine. When we find these dogs, they're not in the greatest condition. And that's putting it extremely mildly. The injuries that they have, the deficiencies, the diseases, the broken bones. Look at this one who's gotten into a fight, had his ear ripped off. I almost hate to show you that, but um, this, is, this is not uncommon. Uh, we have the most horrific scenes to deal with in dealing with these creatures. Um, but we do the best that we can. Um, we get them to the vet, get their blood balanced, nutrition balanced out, try and take care of skin problems, issues, whatever the case is required. We have a wonderful vet who really donates his time if we can provide the supplies. 
He'll be willing to donate his time because he has a heart for these creatures just like we do. And so, uh, so typically there are serious issues with these beautiful creatures. We try to get those rectified as quickly as possible. And, uh, and when possible, you know, if, if there's room, and right now there isn't in the refuge, you know, we'll take them in. Okay. Here's one who had tumors growing in the mouth. You're looking at the inside of a mouth of, of one of the dogs. And the, uh, the vets did surgery, and you can see the, the uh, material that they've removed from his mouth. And uh, the good news is uh, he, he's better for it. So uh, we got to him at a time when we were able to help him. And thank God for that because, you know, for, for many dogs, it's, it's just too late. Here's Pablo. You can see how we found him uh, walking the streets. I think this was on the beach, actually. Totally matted up, uh, neglected, you know, full of fleas, just really in bad shape in terms of his appearance. Um, and you can see what's happened to him on the right here after we've been able to give him some love and attention. Just, you don't even recognize him. Just absolutely a different dog, and he is just the sweetest thing you would, could ever imagine. And so, uh, in the face of all of the ugliness of neglect, abandonment, uh, no one to care for them, you know, we can turn a really ugly situation into a miracle. You know, this is, this is really a miracle to be able to see this kind of a conversion in a creature. And you see their spirit lifted as a result. Their whole personality changes from being defeated and hopeless to one where they feel alive and vibrant and loved and cared for. It's just absolutely an amazing transformation. Here's a dog we found on the street. And you can just see the, the sadness and the hopelessness in his eyes. Um, it's just heartbreaking. Uh, we were able to give this guy some food. We weren't able to take him into the refuge. There's just simply no more room at this point. But um, we're trying to find him on the street and at least uh, do what we can for him uh, while he's uh, out and about on the street. But um, this is not atypical. So for those guys, what Alex and his wife will do is uh, they'll make a stew, a soup with um, byproducts they can get from the butcher shop, uh, throw in some yams or potatoes and rice, some chicken's feet, whatever they can to get some kind of protein or nourishment um, into these creatures so they at least have something to subsist on. And uh, so that's an effort that we do for the ones that are still on the street. And of course, you can imagine having 40 dogs to care for. That's uh, no small task when it comes to um, storing up on food. Thankfully, we have another foundation that has a similar heart for animals uh, that provides food at a discounted rate. Well. It's actually higher price than we'd pay for it here where I am, but it's quite a bit discounted compared to the options available inside Venezuela. So between the food, the, um, the parasite medication, uh, flea and tick treatments, um, this isoflurano, this is an ana um, anesthesia, and this is difficult to find. It's expensive, and it's just pure gold. For the vets, they need this anesthesia to do the surgeries that are necessary. So it's not just a matter of finding the dogs and getting them to the vet. We've got to get the anesthesia uh, and other supplies necessary. So just like the hospitals for the people, just getting them there isn't enough. You've got to find out what they need and then go out and get what they need. Um, so that's a challenge. But back at the refuge, the guys are happy. And uh, you can see here Alex's son with one of the puppies playing guitar. <laughs> 
So they, they do quite well. They're all quite happy back at the refuge. In fact, some of our dogs are very well trained. Let me give you an example with this little clip. So let me introduce you to Community Support Network, where as a member of our community, you will receive a financial education like no other. And along with that, an opportunity to create economic independence. Let me explain. As a member, you're going to learn to generate multiple streams of passive cash flow. And here's how it works. It could not be simpler. You donate $25 one time only to your sponsor in the program and make three referrals. All right, others, as this network grows, will donate to you in this viral network. We ask everybody to make three referrals. Who wouldn't want to help these people? Who wouldn't want to help themselves? One time $25 donation, three referrals, and the network grows. Three turns into nine, turns into 27, then 81, 243, and you can go from there. This global network grows, and it's going to end up supporting you and your family. It will also help PCF and the Venezuela Project and much, much more. Simple, clean, affordable. We're not asking anybody to dig deep into the pockets to send to us. Put it into the community. Help yourself. Help the community. And in so doing, you will help PCF and the Venezuela Project in ways unimaginable. So there you have it. It's simple. It's a no-brainer. Okay, you're going to get a financial education as a member of the Community Support Network. You're going to learn, if you like, to build a home-based business. How to establish passive investments that will grow like you've never imagined possible. Potentially double digits on a monthly basis. You probably need to learn a little bit about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Trading. How to trade it. Make money with that. Trade the markets. Forex. Gold. Learn about financial privacy. In an age where privacy is almost a thing of the past. You can't pay for this kind of education. And you get it free with your $25 donation to your sponsor. It's a value that can't be beat. It's just an absolute no-brainer. Okay, You cannot go wrong with this proposal. All right, so please help us. Please help those desperate children, starving adults, needing medicine, food, the animals in Venezuela. You can do it. Join csn.world. Get with a person who invited you, first of all. Get their link. Get hooked up with them. Start working with them. If you don't have a direct friend or personal sponsor, just go to csn.world and join, and you'll be able to be assigned to somebody by the system. Okay? Share this with three people. All right? Get three people on board. Ask them to do the same and create this viral growth. This is what we're after. All right? Then start getting your financial education. Start receiving your own donations in the 3 by 10 gifting matrix. You can learn how that works with a little more detail in other videos that we have. And then just watch for the next update on the miracles that we'll be creating together. It'll be absolutely exhilarating. All right? Simple. All right? If you want to contact us on any other issues, you can submit a guest support ticket at csn.world. While you're there, we have a few other videos on the web page you can look browse through. And um, if you prefer not to do the CSN routine, you may make direct contributions to PCF um, through donorbox.org forward slash aid for Venezuela.
That's donorbox.org, aid for Venezuela. Simple. All right, we sure appreciate your time and consideration in this worthy project that is really making an impact on this world. We invite you to join us, be a part of it, be a part of something positive in the world. And this is one of the best ways that I can think of to do it. So let me leave you with this, all right? Here's a meme in Spanish. It says, it's not who you are, but it's, it's by that which you transmit or that which you give, that which you emit from your heart and soul. This is your magic. Think about that, folks. Thanks for your attention. We look forward to working with you. We pray that God blesses you and your family, and we look forward to many miracles in the near future. That's all for now. See you in the next video. Take care.